very exciting tutorial here at the Photoshop Training Channel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Instagram at JR from PTC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the 3D pop out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're gonna start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we wanna do is we wanna isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're gonna create a vector around the frame. So I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard. that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner, and click on the next, hold the space bar, and down, click on the bottom right corner, just a little bit more. around the snow border. I'm going to select that top layer, click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers in that move tool, it moves both. They can be in different groups and you can separate it so that allows us to put those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command C to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handle that you want to click and drag on, scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option, and Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to so zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the little outline around our body. So we can adjust that by clicking in the layer mask in the properties panel. The properties panel, you can go into window, properties, click on mask edge, and then maybe shift edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So we keep adjusting it, making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair, and hopefully, we'll get a better selection. So now, it didn't do that good of a job here, so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial, you can see the final image, but I'm just going to go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything needs to be okay. I know that work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final results. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm going to press Z on the keyboard, right click, do screen. And what we're going to work on now is extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're going to use. We're going to use this shovel with snow, so let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it choose flip horizontal and from here I can match the scene a little bit better and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better for the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with 
white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket piece and the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the library channel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements, man here on the Mac, and scale this one in as well. And I'm going to zoom in and get out of the state. Notice how this element is cut up right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is connected to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here in the table, it needs a shadow. So continue that shadow that's coming up the board. And actually, let me drag this layer up on top of the group. That shadow that's coming off the board, so maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow away. Maybe something like that. Now, the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image, it took a little more time work. And what we're going to work on now is extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more. Realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock on the description, you have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I got to do is get rid of this shovel. I'm going to click on the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection around this shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay. Then I can hold Shift and Backspace. Or you can go into Edit. Fill to bring up the fill menu under content, choose content aware, and press OK. And Photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear. I'm going to press Ctrl D, Command D in the Mac to select. And this is what we're going to work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm going to go into the channels panel. I'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast. In this case, the blue channel. I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all the blend mode and give me a different result. In this case, I think I'm going to go with screen and then I will just work on the edges the next step. So I'm going to press OK, and what I'm going to do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this green will be selected, and anything that is black will be selected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit, into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previous. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press Ctrl C. I'm going to deselect that element, Ctrl D, Command D in the back. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm going to paste it here. So whatever the storage is I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy. So I'm going to click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm going to press V to select the move tool. And I'm going to move it around just to fit it into position. So maybe something like this. 
And actually, I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut up right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the plane. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here in the table it needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadows. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of beginning. And this one is that with the final image, I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Every so often I do a search for that hashtag and if I find your image, I'll leave a comment. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something if you have any comments or questions, subscribe to the Photoshop training channel now. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.